So we're going to uh, finish factoring today, so factoring part two. First we'll start with difference of squares. So when you see something that's a difference of squares, you should recognize it right away. So you really need to remember this. It's a very common way to factor. I'm going to give you the general formula first, and then I'll show you what this means. So basically here, if you've got two things that you can take the square root of, two things that are squared, so like x squared minus 4. So you can take the square root of x squared and get x. You can take the square root of 4 and get 2. Okay, so you can take the square root of both of those. Then you can write them, these are the square rooted, they're the numbers that you took the square root of. So of x squared is x, and a 4 is 2, so with a plus sign in between, and the same 2 with a minus sign in between. Okay, so this works for anything of that form. So let's call this example 1. Example 2, let's say we had x squared minus 9, so then this would be x plus the square root of 9 is 3, and x minus 3. Now you can write this in the opposite way. For example, if we had x squared minus 25, you could write x minus 5 and x plus 5 instead of plus first and then minus. So that doesn't matter. Basically what happens when you have something like this, x minus 5 times x plus 5? This is called factoring when we break it down into its factors, two things that are multiplied. And then if we expand this, and we expand by using FOIL, which is first, the first two multiplied, x times x is x squared, outside, the outside two are the x and the five, which is five x, inside, that's the inside two terms, minus 5 times x is minus 5x, and last, the last two terms, minus 5 times plus 5. 5 and 5 is 25, a minus and a plus sign give you a minus. So you notice what happens here is that the we've got a positive 5x and a minus 5x, so they actually cancel, right, because 5x minus 5x is 0, so they cancel and you're left with x squared minus 25, which is in the form here, x squared minus 25. So you're not going to factor and then expand, but this, this is sort of like a check, okay? Once you factor, you can always use FOIL, multiply it out, and you should get back to where you originally started. Now, different squares also can work if you can't do a perfect square root. So, for example, if I had x squared minus 5, well, the square root of 5 doesn't work nice, but you can write this as x plus square root of 5, x minus square root of 5, All right? And um, let's put note, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is, of course, 5. Or square root of 25 is 5. <coughs> okay, so you actually don't need... Um, to have something that works perfect. So we could also have this backwards. So you could have 1 minus x squared. This is also a difference of squares. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of x squared is x. So this would be 1 minus x, 1 plus x. So it could go backwards as well. Now that's called the difference of squares because the word difference means subtract. We can also have the sum of squares. but the sum of squares does not factor. So for example, x squared plus 4, there's no way to factor this. So it does not factor. And if you're asked to factor, that's all you would say. Okay, so just before we go on to the next type of factoring, let's just say a couple examples here. Okay, 
if we had 4x squared minus 9. Basically, any time you have two terms here with a minus sign in between. So here, if you did the square root of 4x squared, that would give me 2x. And the square root of 9 is 3. So this would be 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. And if you foiled that out, you would get back to the original. Eighty-one minus three x squared. So there's a minus. Eighty-one. The square root of eighty-one is nine, and the square root of three x squared doesn't actually work. Nice. This would be the square root of three. It doesn't doesn't work times x. So here we would say this is nine plus root three x, and nine minus root three x. squared minus y squared, x plus y, x minus y. Now you do have to be careful. If we have, uh, for example, a minus sign doesn't automatically mean a difference of squares. Here we've got a minus sign but this is a common factor first. We can pull out an x. So first we would do a common factor. If you divide x cubed by x, you get x squared. And if you divide minus 4x by x, you get minus 4. So we factored this using a common factor. That was sort of step one. Now we can, this is a difference of squares, so we can continue to factor. So we would have x, this is still the x in front, and this is a common factor, x plus 2, x minus 2. So now this is completely factored. Now if you were solving the equation, x cubed minus 4x equals 0, for example, you would first say, okay, we need to factor out an x. Now your equal sign is not in front anymore because it's going down in the middle here. Then you would continue to factor until you can no longer factor. And then we use our zero property, which says that if x is 0, this whole thing would be 0 because 0 times anything is 0. This one says if x plus 2 equals 0, or x is minus 2, then that would be 0. It doesn't matter what these are, because multiplying would give you 0. And here is x minus 2 equals 0, or x is 2. So to solve this equation, the solutions are any of x is 0, minus 2, or 2. Any of these three plugging in will give us a 0 as an answer. And you could check your answer by plugging them in. Now, you could use difference of squares to even factor something that didn't have an x squared, although this uh, would only be used when we're rationalizing. So sometimes you'll do this in um, calculus. So it might be worthwhile to look at, although it's not really factoring. We usually we only factor things when there's an x squared or higher. But you could do this. So the square root of x is just square root of x, and the square root of 9 is 3. So you could write x minus 9 as the square root of x plus 3 and the square root of x minus 3, and that would actually also work. So if you foiled that out, you would get back to x minus 9. Okay, so we can do things like that. So just one more. This would be, since we can't take the square root of 5, this would be root 5x. Square root of 4 is 2. 
and root 5x minus 2. Okay, so the next type of factoring is we're going to call this a is not equal to 1. So if we have ax squared plus bx plus c, then if a is a number other than 1. So for example, if we were asked to factor 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. Okay, so we are going to make this actually bigger in order to use a common factor and make it smaller. So there's a couple steps here. So step one, so we're going to put it like a little time sign here. We'll multiply. And a plus sign, so add. And this could actually be add or subtract. So we want two numbers that multiply to give whatever 2 times 12 is. So let's write it in general up here. The multiply is a times c, and the add is b. So whereas before we were, when we had a 1 here, we were looking for two numbers that multiply to give c, just c, and add to give b. So we still want to add to give that middle number, but the difference here is if that's not a 1, we actually need it to multiply to give a times c. So in this example, a and c, be 2 times 12, so 24. So we want two numbers that add to give 24, or multiply to give 24, sorry, and add to give 11. Make sure you take the signs with those. Okay, so this is where your, your number sense has to come in. So we want two numbers that multiply to give 24. So what are some options? 24 times 1, 12 times 2, uh, 8 times 3, 6 times 4. Okay, we'll just check these. So these all multiply to give 24, and these add to give 25, and they subtract to give 23, neither of which is 11. These add 12 plus 2 to give 14, and they subtract to give 10. That's also not 11. These add to give 12 and, or I mean, sorry, 11, if I add it correctly, and which is what we want, uh, and they subtract to give 5. These add to give 10 and subtract to give 2. So here is the 11. So we want to try 8 and 3. So what we're going to do is break up the 11x that was a plus 11x to b plus 8x plus 3x. So that was 8 and 3, and we were trying to get the 11. So we found out that 8 and 3 multiply to give 11, or add to give 11. So we add 8x and 3x. So we're going to rewrite our first equation, but instead of the 11x, so instead of that 11x that we have in the middle. We're going to replace that with the 8x and the 3x. Okay, so I've just rewritten the same thing, but instead of the 11x, I've rewritten them. And it does not matter what order. Okay, you could do 3 times 11, or 3 times 8, or 8 times 3. It doesn't matter. Now, what we do is we look at this answer as in two sets. So we're going to look at it this way and do a common factor. Just write that here. Common factor for each. So if we look at this first one, the common factor would be a 2 and an x. We can divide this by 2x and we can divide this by 2x. Here, what would be the common factor? So we can divide this by 3 and this by 3, so 3 would be the common factor here. All right, so we take out that common factor. So what that would look like is 2x, and we write whatever's left over. So 2x divided by 2x squared divided by 2x is just an x left. 
8x divided by 2x is the x's cancel, and we have a 4, just a 4. Here's a plus sign. Sometimes there'll be a minus, and I'll show you that later. So here's a 3 that we're factoring out. If we take a 3 out of 3x, we're left with x. And if we take a 3 out of 4, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now, if you've done this correctly, the left over in that square bracket should be the same for each. In this example, that's an x plus 4. We see that twice. And if they're not the same, then you probably didn't factor out the common factor. Maybe you just factored out 2 and you missed the x, or, or there was more numbers you could factor out. So here, these are in common, and we are actually doing a common factor again. So you're looking now at these two and saying, what do they have in common? They both have an x plus 4. So if you write what's left over here, you take out the x plus 4, and you're left with just 2x. Here you take out the x plus 4 and you're left with the 3. So our factor is x plus 4 times 2x plus 3. And that, if you multiply that out, you're equal to our original. We're, we'll check this. I'll foil this out on the next page just to, to check it. But that's, that's how you would do it. Now we're going to do a couple of these and you try to follow along. Try to actually do them with me. Pause the video and try one, and then, and then go on to the next. So I'm just going to write this at the top, and we'll just check our answer. So sometimes with these, it is good to check to just to be sure that you've, uh, you've done it all correctly. So let's check. So what we had was x plus 4 times 2x plus 3. So FOIL first, 2x times 2x is 2x squared outside, x times 3, 3x, inside, 4 times 2 is 8x, and last, 4 times 3 is 12. So we've got 2x squared, 3x and 8x is 11x, plus 12, and that's what we started with. All right, so let's try another one of those. Two x squared minus five x minus three. So you start with the multiply to give a times c, and the add or subtract to give b. So we want it to multiply to give two times minus three, which is negative six. So we want to multiply to give negative 6, and we want to add or subtract to give negative 5. So to multiply to give negative 6, it would be, we could say a 6 and a 1, one of them negative, and just worry about the 6 itself. And what else gives 6? 2 times 3. So these add to give 7, and subtract to give 5. So this could work. But if you look here, these ones add to give 5 and subtract to give 1. So there's actually two options we have. So there's two options. We could have, we want these to multiply to give negative 6. So if we use 6 and 1, to multiply to give negative 6, one of them has to be negative. We want them to subtract to give a negative 5. Remember, we want a negative 5 here. So if this one was minus and this plus, so they multiply to give negative 6, and they add minus 6 plus 1 is minus 5, so that works. Now, if you had said the 2 and the 3, watch this. So if we had 2 and 3, we want them to multiply to give a negative 6. So one of them has to be a plus and one a minus. And we want them to add to give negative 5. Well, the only way to add to give negative 5 is for them both to be negative. But this multiplies to positive 6. A minus times a minus is a plus, and minus 5. So this one does not work since we can't both get a negative 5 by adding and a negative 6 by subtracting. So here's our answers.
Okay, so that's just to demonstrate that sometimes with your negative sign you have to be careful. So you should try something like this. And we'll do another example with a negative sign next to show. Sometimes there's not more than one option. There's just one option and it either works or it doesn't and we can't factor. All right, so here's our original question. We're going to replace that minus 5x with what we just found here with x's. So this would be 2x squared. Instead of the minus 5x, we're going to say minus 6x plus 1x. And then our minus 3. So I'll just put an equals in front because this line is still equal to this line. Minus 6 plus 1 is equal to minus 5. Now, we once we do that, we look at the two terms and we take out a common factor. So what's common here would be a 2 and an x. And here there's nothing in common, so we just say 1. So our first one, we take out a 2x. What's left is just an x. And here, 6x divided by 2x, the x's cancel. 6 over 2 is 3 with a minus sign. And here if we take out a 1, you're not really doing anything, but we see that these two brackets are the same, which is what it should be, and we can factor that out, x minus 3, and then what's left is a 2x plus 1. And there it is. We can check our answer. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 1 is x. Minus 3 times 2 is minus 6x, and minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. So here we have 2x squared. These together, 1 minus 6 is minus 5, minus 3, and that's what we started with. The same as right up here. Okay, so let's do another one with a minus sign because they can be a little bit tricky. Okay, so we want it to multiply to give a times c and add or subtract to give b. So multiply. a times c is 5 times minus 2 is negative 10. And we want to add or subtract to give minus 9. So start with that 10. We get the factors of 10. So this could be 10 times 1. Um, 5 times 2, and that's it. That, that's the options. So if we add these, we get 11, and we subtract them, we get 9. If we add these, we get 7, and subtract them, we get 3. So we wanted a 9, so the only option is right here. So we need to figure out the signs. So 10 and 1. If we want those to add to give a negative 9, we would need a minus 10 plus 1. Now just check the multiplication. Does minus 10 times plus 1 give me what I want? What I want is a negative 10. So they multiply to give negative 10 and they add to give negative 9, so that's our two numbers. So rewrite your original question. We're going to replace that 9x with our new numbers, which will be minus 10x plus 1x. And then there's the minus 2. So that's replacing this. Then we do our common factor. So here would be a 5x. They both have a 5 and they both have an x. And here again, we don't have uh, anything in common, so you actually take out a 1. So here we're going to take out a 5x we're left with an x minus 2. We take out a 1, or we write it as if we were, took it out. These are equal. That's a little check along the way. So we factor that out, and we write what's left over, 5x plus 1. 
and you can check using foil that we get back to the original. But this would be your actual question. Okay, so let's look at this next question. So we wanted to multiply to give A times C, and we wanted to add to give B. So A times C is 3 times minus 2, and add to give B, which is just positive 1. So we start with the 6. Don't worry about the sign. You're looking for two numbers that multiply to give 6. 6 and 1, 2 and 3. We add them to give 7, subtract them to give 5, so that one won't work. We add them to get 5, we subtract them to get 1. Don't worry about the sign, okay? We just subtract the two numbers and get 1, because the sign part is separate. Alright, so here's our number, 1. So, we are going to use 2 and 3. So if we want 2 and 3 to give us a 1, do we need a positive 1 or a negative 1? Positive. So the 3 would have to be positive and the 2 would have to be negative. Now when we multiply those, do we get what we need? So when we multiply minus 2 times 3, we get negative 6. So good. We found two numbers that add to give a positive 1 and multiply to give a negative 6. So I'm just going to write it over here. So you rewrite your original question replace the B, the middle number, with our new one. So minus 2x plus 3x. So just be careful that this is what you wanted. We had a minus 2 and a 3. Make sure you put the x with it. And then minus 2. Now our common factor here would just be x, and our common factor here there is none, so a 1. So if we take out an x, 3x minus 2, and we take out a 1, 3x minus 2. You see that these are the same. So 3x minus 2, and whatever's left over, x plus 1. And then you could check by FOIL. Okay, so we'll do this one. So we want to multiply to give A times C. So here that would be 4 times 1, which is 4. And add or subtract to give negative 2. To give B, and B is negative 2. So numbers that multiply to give 4. 4 and 1, and 2 and 2. So these add give 5 and subtract 4 minus 1 is 3. So neither of those is a 2, so we can't use that. Here these add to give 4 and subtract to give 0. Neither of those works either. So we needed a 2 to add or subtract and neither one of those works. So the first question you ask, is there more numbers that I can multiply to give 4? Is there any other way to multiply to give 4? And there's not, so there's no other numbers to check. So all this means, if it doesn't work and you can't get it, then 4x squared minus 2x plus 1 does not factor. So sometimes they don't work. There's actually probably many more options that we can think of that don't work than actually do work. So we're going to put all this factoring together. Okay, so the question is going to say factor the following. So let's put it all together with some examples. So number one.
Okay, so step one in factoring always is to look for a common factor. So step one, common factor. So you look for that first. That leaves you with things that are smaller. So this particular example does do a common factor first. So we would take out that common factor, which is x. Rewrite everything else. Okay, so step two is to factor the remaining So remember, it could be a difference of squares. It could be uh, an a equals 1 example, where you're looking to multiply to give c and add or subtract to give b. Or it could be an a not equals 1, so you're multiplying to get a times c, and you're adding or subtracting to give b. So that's what you look at what's left. Now this is the a equals 1. So we just find two numbers that multiply to give 3, 3 and 1, and add to give 4. And 3 plus 3 plus 1 works. So this would be x plus 3, x plus 1. And here it is, totally factored. Number two, two x cubed plus six x squared plus four x. Okay, same idea. So look for a common factor. We can take out a two and an x here. So we'd be left with x squared. Divide two x here, we would be left with a three and an x. Divide two x, oops, it's just a two. Now this is an a equals 1, so we want to multiply to give 2 and add or subtract to give 3. So 2 and 1 multiply to give 2 and they also add to give 3. So plus 2 and plus 1. You can check, they multiply to give 2 and they add to give 3. Now, this same technique of common factor and then factoring what's remaining also works when we have something with a minus in front. So we would say, like, if we had minus x squared plus 6x minus 9. So this, you could use the other method we did where a is not 1, but you could and make it easier by m factoring out a minus, or think of this as a minus 1 if you want we change all the signs. So dividing by minus 1, we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So taking out a minus sign changes all the signs. So you see that was a negative, and now it's a positive. That was a positive, and now it's a negative. And that was a negative, and now it's a positive. You don't need the 1 there. So we want two numbers that multiply to give 9 and add to give 6. So 3 times 3 is 9. If we want them to add to give a minus 6, they both have to be negative. So just check. If we multiply those, do we get positive 9? Yes. And we add them, we get a negative 6. So this could also be written as minus x minus 3 squared, because there's two brackets that are the same. It's a perfect square. So if we had 3x squared minus 12, common factor is a 3. And then this is a difference of squares. And that's how you would do that. Now what if we had 3x squared plus 12? So common factor is 3. But this is a sum of squares, and this can't be factored.
page. In this lecture earlier, we said when it's a positive sign instead of a negative sign, they can't be factored. Okay, so we'll try this last one. So do they have a common factor? Yes, a 2. A 2 would be it. So 12x squared minus, take the 2 out of 2x is x, take the 2 out of 12 is 6. So what we have left is, is a case where a is not 1. So we need to multiply to give a times c. So 12 times minus 6. So 12 times 6 is 72. And we need to add or subtract to give b, and b is minus 1. OK, so that's a bit tricky. We need to factor 72. So the factors of 72, well, 12 and 6 are here. So they may work, right? That's a, an, always an option, is the actual numbers you started with. Uh, so 12 times 6. But those add to give uh, 18, and they subtract uh, to give 6. So, and we wanted a 1, so they don't work. Now, here is what you could do. So you probably saw this in high school when you factor. So we know one factor of 72 is 12 times 6. But you can break these up further. So this will give me, say, 2 times 6. And 6 could be 2 times 3. Anything that we can factor further here, the 6 is 2 times 3. So 72 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2. So how many 2's do I have here? 4? Oh. 1, 2, 3. Should I have 3? Oh, this should be a 3. So 2 cubed times 3 squared. So these are all the possible factors. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means you can take these in any order. So we could do, let's just write them all out. So this, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 times 9. 8 times 9. That would work. They add to give 17, and they subtract to give 1. So this is probably the answer. But let me just go down here and show you another one. So if we said 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, just leaving them in this order, we could say 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times another 3 is 18. So 4 times 18 will also give 72. Uh, and there's tons of options here, so you can start going through them. If we just wrote down another option, you know, you could write these. You could say one is three, and the other is whatever this number works out to be. Two times two times two is eight. Eight times three is 24. So 24 times three will also work. Now, we already found one that gives us a 1, so we're going to check this before we go and check all the other options. So let's say 8 times 9. So going back to what we wanted, we wanted to multiply to give negative 72, and we wanted it to add or subtract to give negative 1. So we're saying that 8 and 9 could work. If we Start with the add, so we want to give negative 1, so that would have to go that way. Now when we multiply these, do we get negative 72? is 8 times minus 9 give me negative 72. It does. And they add to give negative 1. So they work. All right, so let's just go to the next page. I'm going to rewrite the original question. So you can see it at the top. So what we had so far
and now we found that it, the two numbers will be plus 8 and minus 9. So that's 8 plus 8x minus 9x. So we're going to replace the negative 1x with that. So 12x squared plus 8x minus 9x and then the minus 6. Right, so we were replacing those. Then we do a common factor for each of these. Now we're just carrying that 2 along because we've already factored that out. So here, common factor 12 and 8. We could take a 4 out and an x. Here, notice there's a minus in front. We didn't see that before. You're always going to take that minus out. So minus, and the common factor would be 3. We can divide both of those numbers by 3. So take a 4x out. We would be left with, think of dividing, 12x squared over 4x. So one of the x's cancel, and 12, uh, 4 goes into 12 three times. Here the x's both cancel. We have an 8 over 4, which is 2. Here we're going to take a minus 3 out, so that's going to change the signs. Minus, three, minus 9x divided by minus 3 is positive 3x. All right, minus 9x divided by minus 3 is positive. The x is still there, and 9 and 3 gives us a 3. Minus 6 over minus 3 is positive 2. Now remember these are supposed to be equal. And they are. So, I'm just going to make a square bracket. I've got lots of round brackets going on. So 3x plus 2, we're going to take that out, because it's in both of them. And we write what's left. 4x minus 3. So we have this factored as 2 times 3x plus 2 times 4x minus 3. Now that was a lot of work, so we could check our answer. And remember our original question was 24x squared minus 2x minus 12. And we have that now as being the same as saying this. Okay, so that would be your actual answer. We know that this is equal to this. Now you could check, especially for these longer ones, you could check your answer. So how do you multiply three things? Just leave the two out for now. Do FOIL with the two brackets. So we're going to say 3x plus 2 times 4x minus 3. First, 3x times 4x is 12x squared. Outside, 3 and 3 is 9. Inside, 2 and 4 is 8. And last, 2 and minus 3 is minus 6. So that gives me 12x squared minus 9 plus 8 is minus 1. And then we had that times 2. And you multiply the 2 by everything in there. So 24x squared, 2x minus 12. And that was our original question. So this is just a check. Your answer is actually up here because we were asked to factor. But here is the check. Really work it out. You know, use FOIL, and this is just your check to make sure that it worked. Okay, so you should go and try the homework for those. Uh, you could even write down these questions over again and try them again and then compare my answers to see if you got them right.